Heat training can take a chunk off of your race times in just two weeks, which is way faster and easier than increasing your running volume. Luckily, we live in an actual furnace, so we picked up a few tips on how to manage training and what the science says. This, it already feels like a stupid idea. Coming outside to do the opening segment of the video, it's 32 degrees with a real feel of 37 degrees. But the reason behind it is we feel very lucky because with every new scientific study done, it's becoming more and more apparent that there are massive gains to be found from heat training that can rival altitude training. And that's why a lot of Olympic marathoners, a lot of Olympic runners are starting to experiment with not only altitude, but heat. We're just lucky because we live in heat. And you'll wonder, and I know this will be one of your first questions, but how does it work? And it's actually pretty easy. You put yourself in a stressful situation like this, your body panics and it turbocharges your cooling system. As in all of the time when you're running or living in our case, the body is trying to cool us down as efficiently as possible. So if you expose yourself to this kind of heat stress safely, by the way, then your body just gets better at cooling you down from the heat stress. And it, I genuinely, I'm telling you it works because when we ran New York, Boston, Chicago, we felt like we were flying and some people were saying, you know, some of them were hot days. Not for us, they weren't. So the adaptation, let's say it takes two weeks, it kind of goes like this. Days one to three, body panics, you feel tired or it's not very nice, but then you get out of the other side. Heart rate starts to drop. Sweat comes earlier and then sweat becomes more efficient. Heart rate drops more. And then within 14 days, you're adapted to the heat and you're gonna run faster. You really gotta try it, but if you genuinely hate training in the heat, there is another way. It could be as simple as having a hot bath three to four times a week and not drinking when you're in the bath and then drinking after to replace those fluids. That's your starter pack for heat adaptation. But if you want to adapt while you're running, then I'm gonna give you our five simplest ways that we've found to adapt and use the heat in Thailand to our benefit. Mary, what time is it? 4.30 in the afternoon. And what is the temperature? 33 degrees, real feel 37. Uh, what are we just about to do? A 10K race. Okay, a 10K race. And this whole video is gonna be about how to race and train in the heat, because if there's one thing that we can do is give you advice on that having lived in Thailand for four years, which is like living in a literal oven. When it comes to racing, I've been getting well-versed in how my body and particularly heart rate react over time. Trust me, I've gone out way too hard over here and I have blown up so spectacularly, it actually scared me off racing for a while until I'd figured it out. Okay, before I can't talk anymore, the first thing about training in the heat is, certainly racing in the heat is, I do it much more to heart rate. Not really about pace, try and manage that heart rate. Because once it goes, it goes. What I learned is that in hotter temperatures, your body's cooling system, it doesn't work the same way. Slowing down doesn't cool you down and walking actually makes you hotter. So you have to get really good at starting modestly and building over the course of a race. In this race, my heart rate was in zone two in the first kilometer, then it went into zone three, but that only lasted until kilometer four. And then kilometer five onwards, I was in zone four. Lead runners way up the road. So this is like the chasing pack we're in now. Yeah, got a little group of us working together. It's very hot today. So hot. But that's okay. I see that as managed effort that allowed me to deal with the heat. Going out too fast and having a high heart rate and then blowing up is way more of a suffer fest to be honest. And I honestly think this is the faster way round of doing it. Obviously, Part of it is done on field two, but I can assure you that none was done on pace. And I actually ended up winning the old boy category and being third overall in this race because I mastered my heart rate. Kind of. And from the UK, Ben Bridges. Ben, 45 years young, first master's athlete as well. It's actually the next morning now and we've come out. You can just see your head there. Mikey Lawrence, Polly and Mary, we've come out on a run and it must be about 6.30 and another way to battle the heat is obviously, I know it's gonna sound really obvious, get out early, get out late, don't get out in the middle of the day because you will boil alive.
Another big benefit of getting up in the morning early is you just get to see sights like this. But like absolutely no one here on this beach. Look how empty it is. I mean, obviously we don't live on a beach yet, but that's not the main reason for getting up in the morning. But it's, it's a bloody good one. It's not gonna really surprise you the reason in behind running early or running late, and it's all about the quality of the session. Because the moment you go into the hot parts of the day, it's really, really difficult to control your heart rate. That's essentially it. And on an easy run, you wanna be able to control it low. And on a hard run, you wanna be able to, let's say interval session, you wanna be able to recover. And in the heat, it just makes it really difficult for that heart rate to come down. Sometimes we don't have a choice, but staying out of the middle of the day is a way we can achieve as close to a good training session as possible. In the heat, we have to get our rest and our hydration strategy on point, particularly if we're running longer distances. And we use two approaches. The first is a hydration vest, and that sounds obvious, I know, but on longer runs, you need to stay fueled and hydrated. And the easiest way is to take a vest with drinks and gels in it. That way you can stop when you need, you can drink when you need, you can fuel when you need, and it keeps the session quality high. And if you've ever run out of drink on a hot day whilst you're running, you will know the pain. But the approach we currently use for our longer runs over here in Thailand is we find looped courses. So we've got two long run destinations that are looped, meaning we can leave plenty of drink and gels in one place and we can stop for a short time and replenish on each loop. And actually, that's also a good technique to use in the heat anyway. Take breaks, allow your heart rate to recover a little bit and stop you from drifting up into zone three on those long runs. Small breaks in long runs, honestly, they have no negative impact and I'd say say actually on balance, they keep you safer. And actually the loop could even start and finish at your house if you've got a nice route nearby. Overall, for the long runs in the heat, by looking after yourself however you can, you keep the session quality high, and that is the key. <laughs> okay. 1200 meter repeats for me today. This is the lactate threshold type session I was talking about in the video last week. And they're deeply unpleasant, but I love them. Whew. And I have to do all of these in ridiculous heat. So I have a strategy. Can't talk. Got about 300 meters left. Talk at the end. Whew. That was brutal. What we've learned over our time living in a country like this is you have to recalibrate your expectations. So it's a, a little bit like point one about running to heart rate rather than to pace. But this point is more about understanding that pace, it can't be the same as when you're in temperate climates. It just can't like, I'm definitely here about 10 to 20 seconds per kilometer slower. But luckily now I've kind of, I've raced in temperate climates as well, so I understand the process. But at first, we were really harsh on ourselves. Oh my God, we're not hitting the same paces as we would do in the UK. Truth is, you can't really. I mean, uh, this particular session, my pace is falling off a cliff and I'm letting it because I'm just not recovering in this heat. Two minutes, the heart rate is barely coming down before it goes back up. Um, but I'm being kind to myself, you know. What I've decided is, I follow the heart rate, like we said in the race, same in the session, but I understand that my pace is probably gonna be 10 to 15 seconds off, and that makes that session that much more bearable. And I know I'm doing the right thing, so then we get to go again next week, and maybe get a little bit faster. My first consideration when I'm going out running and it's super hot is the clothing, and I'm looking for things that are as lightweight as possible, really good material, that will wick away the sweat. So something super, super light, um, and it will just keep you cool and comfortable in the heat, it's really important. And as for me, although I don't really think about clothes as much as Mary does, I do have a bulk of vests here that I use now that we're in Thailand. When we are in the UK, I used to lot, use a lot more t-shirts, but this is one of my first things that I put on in the hot weather. I usually wear a hat because I hate getting a ton of sweat in my eyes, and this stops all that. These drawers are really important. Good quality socks are key because you want to avoid blisters. So again, lightweight materials. And my secret, and my secret top tip is a good sweat band. Pop that on your wrist. You can wipe your brow, keeping the sweat out of your eyes and just uh, 
keep yourself less sweaty. <laughs> I don't know where you were going there, no. did you? <laughs> I'm mainly for men, although not exclusively, although I don't know, but for me when it gets hot and it gets really sweaty and these, the fabrics get really wet, I get a problem with chafing of the nips. So I make sure I have plasters on both of them for the long runs as well and honestly, honestly, lifesaver. And then there's things like this Omius headband, which well, there's not a ton of evidence for it working, but it might help you cool down a little bit. It feels cool. Mm -hmm. um, and sunglasses are really important if you've got, especially light coloured eyes, sensitive eyes, the sun can make it really uncomfortable, so get Not little here. dead old shrimp eyes, like I seem to be fine in the sun. And finally, don't forget to put the sun lotion on because honestly, you can get caught out. Even in the UK, it's really important to protect the skin. That's about it. Run time. Final message from me though is that heat training is no joke so make sure all your sessions are manageable, gradual, sensible because you don't want to get it wrong, stay safe out there. And if you liked this video you're definitely also going to like this one which is the five smartest diet habits that every runner should know. And also if you learn something new here consider subscribing to the channel. Feel like that's a fair deal, we'll see you next week.